Okay, good morning. Um, I'm now about to start Wolverblades uh, Ancient Britain research trip number probably six or seven or something mental. I I've done this quite a few times now. Um, I'm hooked on all these locations. Um, it it's just a, just a grand day out. So today I'm taking in a couple of new spots. I'm going to Swinside Stone Circle, which is about estimated 4,000 years old, 5,000 years old. So it's very old. Uh, it predates the game a fair bit, but it's, uh, well, it looks to be a beautiful place. It's quite, it's, this one's quite remote. Uh, it's in the middle of a farm somewhere, so I've got to, I've got to find that. It's going to be, I think, 20 minutes on foot after a, a fair bit of driving. So uh, today's about a 12-hour trip all around. Um, it's going to be pretty epic, and I'm going to do different updates along the way. So hopefully this isn't too boring for you. Um, I know I certainly having fun, and I've got a big mountain pass to climb as well. Highest one in Britain. No, no, not in Britain. Highest one in England. And um, I did this, I've done it a few times, uh, mounted a GoPro on the roof last time with a cheap imported mount. Uh, tip would be, don't buy cheap imported mounts because they vibrate for fun. And the picture is unusable, so I'm now using a GoPro mount and I'm going to re-climb the mountain. And that should be good fun, uh, as long as I don't come a cropper because it's uh, sheer drops on, on one side for 90% of the journey. So uh, yeah, here it goes, catch you soon. Okay. I've made it up to Swinside Stone Circle. Uh, this is the first location for today's trip and the first time I've ever been here before and it is amazing. You can see it behind me now. Uh, incredible, incredibly preserved stone circle. It's nearly thick so that my history in that respect ain't so great but I'm going for a three or four, maybe five thousand years old. It's old. Um, but just to give you an idea of the location here, it's just so remote, it's amazing. It's been a couple of miles walk to get here. But as you can see, looking around, it's just amazing around here, it's beautiful. I mean, I'm used to living in the countryside, but this is out of the way, you know, this is really, really nice. Yes, there is a path over there, you probably just saw, um, but it's, it's not access, it's owned by uh, a farmer, this is his land, and he's uh, kind enough to let people walk up here and, and walk around the circle, so kind of wouldn't mind owning a farm with this on it, though. it's amazing, let's have a good look. So this, from what I can make out, I mean, it's easy for me to guess, I'm no historian, I suppose, but uh, this feels like a, an entrance. It's the only place where there's doubled up stones, so I can't even begin to imagine what would be going through people's minds as they were uh, coming into a place like this. I mean, you can imagine torches and singing or chanting or whatever, I don't know. But it's kind of breathtaking, to be honest, it really is. You know, people would have travelled. I mean, you look around the, when you look at this location, I mean, alright, there's the farm over there, but you know, it's just, it's just big hills in every direction and um, people must have travelled such a distance to get here. You know, the historians say it's um, druids and pagans and so on, but I guess we don't really know for sure. Whatever it was, it was some kind of earth-based religion and uh, I mean if you're gonna, <laughs> if you're gonna praise anything, you're gonna praise the land and the sky that gives you your food and gives you a life I suppose. So a place like this, you know, nestled in between all these hills, must have felt like they were paying tribute to, to something pretty powerful. I mean, the wind's blowing a little bit, but it's a beautiful day. But imagining this on a really cold winter's day with the wind blowing, the rain crumbing down, it, it must have been, wow, you must have been pretty dedicated to, uh, to make a long trek up here. If you're lucky enough to have a horse, it might not have been quite as bad, but, <laughs> but yeah, so um, this circle won't, won't, this won't technically be in the game, because it's a little bit too far south for the for the story but these are dotted all around the UK and uh, it gives me a, a huge amount of inspiration just for the visuals and the stones themselves I mean a lot of the stones that are in the game are drawn directly from places like this I've been to quite a few places now quite a few well, most of the stone circles around this area and they're great and these are the ones that are left so God knows how many there were a few thousand years ago I'm sure the stones have been pillaged for a million other things over the years yeah, just amazing, just amazing. I'm gonna set this place up for a little bit, I think. And uh, yeah, then take the walk back to the back to the truck and then uh, head on up, hard not pass for the big climb. God, this is amazing. In fact, I'm actually gonna go quiet for a minute. Just check this place out.
to see in a bit. Um, impromptu stop off. I was driving along, saw a sign, Roman bathhouse. And uh, I recalled from a previous trip that there was supposed to be a really well preserved bathhouse down here. Apparently, one of the best preserved in the north of England, I think, if that's, if that's right. Um, here it is um, behind me. So I'm going to have a quick look around here. Quite nice to find this. I think this is where the, uh, the Romans would have come to wash off the blood of the locals after they'd had a good old, uh, a good old fight. So let's have a look. That's a fair amount of a structure to say it's uh, ruined. I mean, it's an impressive building. I think that's nigh on 2,000 years old. It's pretty amazing. Ravenglass Roman bathhouse. God. So yeah, the amount of history around this part of the north is amazing. It really is. It's come across stuff all the time. This is a bit out of the nowhere, really. I've just gone around the corner and. Lo and behold, there's a sign for it. It's been a bit of a walk to get to, but um, yeah, amazing. You know, to have such contrasting bits of local ancient history. You know, you've got where the Romans would have come to Bath, and you've got Stone Circle only, what, 20 minutes from here? And then we're gonna be going up a mountain pass another 20 minutes from here. Certainly now to do things grand, didn't they? I mean, I'm six foot two, and I'm staring up at this, uh, what would have been a pretty impressive archway, I think. So, bah, these civilised Romans coming to Britain and making all this trouble. One fucking stick. In fact, in fact, you know what? We might stick a bathhouse into uh, one of the latter levels, set in a fort. I think might be quite nice to come and uh, come and slaughter a few Romans midway through a chilling bath. In comes a ginger-bearded warrior by the name of Karadag. Quite powerful, you know, walking through places where, you know, Roman officials, Roman people, Roman soldiers would have walked like one and a half thousand, two thousand years ago, and you walk in the same kind of footsteps. It's uh, well, it's pretty normal that lots of people walk around the same places many times over, but I don't know, it kind of blows my mind. I am an artist, so it blows my tiny mind. It's not got a huge capacity for anything uh, hugely important other than drawing pictures, but hey. <laughs> Great vistas, though. I mean, back then, Britain was something like 80, 90% forestry, so apparently the, the landscape we see today is due to the Romans. They came and they, uh, they deforested a lot of Britain to make it, well, to make farmland, to keep control of it, because uh, the villagers, the tribes, they were masters of fighting in forests, but not fi masters of fighting in big open fields like the Romans were. So it was to their advantage to hack down our beautiful forests and turn it into their kind of uh, their ground for warfare. But nonetheless, imagine this. You can see the tree line over there, so I'd imagine that tree line would have come right the way over here at some point. But you can imagine a hard day's graft coming down some bathhouses here and chilling out for a bit. Must have been pretty amazing. Okay, that's. Uh, Enough boring babble from me, and I'm gonna have a little wander around here and then get back in the car and head up to Hard Knot. Catch you in a bit. Enjoy this, I'm actually sat in the ruins of one of the defensive towers. Oh, yes. <laughs> 